Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, we are going to walk through some profit maximization exercises relevant for intermediate micro problem set two. So first question, farmer Bob applies N pounds of fertilizer per acre. The marginal product of fertilizer is one minus N over 100 bushels of corn. The price of corn is a dollar per bushel. The price of fertilizer is uh, three quarters, 75 cents per pound. How many pounds of fertilizer per acre should farmer Bob use to maximize profits? Okay, well, this is actually just a pretty standard profit maximization problem. A lot of it is actually distilling the information you need from the exercise itself. So we're given marginal product to fertilizer. We're given the output price. We're given the price of fertilizer, the input price. So this is one where we're going to set P, MP1 equal to omega 1. Right? Bob should use, well, why did I skip the answer? So marginal product is 1 over N over, uh, 1 minus N over 100. Output price is 1. Uh, the input price was 0.75, so we're going to get 1, or PMP1 is equal to omega 1. 1 is our output price times our marginal product equal to our input price. And then just solving, we're going to find 0.25 is equal to N over 100, or we need 25 as N. All right. More complicated version of this problem might be if you had the production technology and you had to back out the marginal product yourself. So for the production function, describe by Q is equal to L to the quarter times K to the eighth. This is a Cobb-Douglas production technology. Find the marginal products of labor, marginal product of capital, and the marginal rate of technical substitution. Well, our marginal product of labor is just dQdL. Marginal product of capital is just dQdK. If we take the derivative with respect to labor, this is going to be 1 times L to the minus 3 fourths. K to the 1 eighth comes along for the ride. Then we're going to have 1 eighth L to the fourth k to the minus 7 eighths comes along for the ride. When you take the derivative with an exponent, you bring it, you multiply by the exponent, and then you reduce the exponent by 1. And so that's this right here. Marginal rate of technical substitution is just the ratio of these things. So we have 1 fourth divided by 1 fourth, that's 2. L to the minus 3 fourths minus 1 fourth is going to be L to the minus 1, or L, in the denominator. And then k to the 1 eighth minus minus 7 eighths is just k. So 2k over L is our ratio of marginal products. All right, Ripon Good Cookies, based in Ripon, Wisconsin. So the cookie factory uses two inputs to produce cookies according to production function. Here, 2 times the square root of x1 plus x2. Cookies sell for $50 per crate. Input 1 costs $5 per unit. Input 2 costs uh, $50. If input 2 is fixed at 10, find the profit maximizing level of x1. All right, so our profit is going to be 50 times our production technology. So this is price, output market price, output price times the, the technology minus the cost. This is the cost. This is the expenditure on input one. This is the expenditure on input two. The marginal product of factor one is going to be one half times two, which is one x1 to the minus one half. That's this. 50 times x1 to the minus 1 half equals 5. The derivative here is just going to be 5. Or solving, we find the optimal amount of factor 1 is just 100. What's the profit level associated with this answer? Well, just evaluate profit. Let's just plug in this 10 to this statement right up here. And we find, oh, our profits are going to be 500, which is good. Not 500 factorial. It's 500 exclamation point. Explanation point. Exclamation point. Right. So now suppose we're in the long run world. What's going to be the profit maximizing amount of factor one? Well, it actually turns out the profit, the optimal level of X1 is not going to change. When we solve for the optimal usage of the two factors independently, um, here the, f the optimal amount is going to be is still uh, 100. Now suppose Ripping Good Cookies is free to vary their usage of all inputs. Does the firm need to change its usage of X2 to maximize profit? Well, the interesting thing to do is look and see how factor 2 is entering the profit decision. Look, it's entering linearly. So here's profit. Here's the cost portion. Here's like the revenue portion. Here's the cost portion. If we multiply this through, this is going to be 50 times this stuff, which we don't care about because that's just factor 1. And then 50 plus or 50 times x2 is going to be my revenue coming specifically through the use of factor 2. My cost coming specifically through the use of factor 2 is minus 50x2. It's going to cancel out. You probably saw that when you're doing this calculation up here, right? Anyway, so any level of factor 2 is as good as any other. 
Maybe the firm just keeps what it's been given for the short run version. If the price is bigger than, if the output price is bigger than the factor price, you'd increase profits boundlessly by raising the usage of that factor. If the output price is equal to the factor price, like we have here, it just doesn't matter. And if the output price is less than the factor price, you wouldn't use that factor. You wouldn't use the, whatever the input was. And so that's all we're saying right here is we're saying, since we're observing that factor two is entering linearly, then the relevant comparison is what is this price compared to, what is P, that's 50, compared to W, here it happens to be 50. And that's why it didn't matter what level of factor two we used. Right. Here's another ripping good cookies question. Um, they, they had a, I don't know if they're still there, they had a cookie factory, you could go there for free samples. And it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. So anyway, suppose the cookie factory is two inputs, it's the same production technology. What did I do? I changed the output price and I changed the factor price. Okay. So how's the problem change? Well, we're going to set our marginal product to factor one uh, equal to the mar we're going to set our output price times the marginal product of factor one equal to the price of factor one. So it's going to be 100 times the square root, well, the negative square root of x1 is equal to 5. Or we find we need to use 400 units of factor 1. What's going to be the profit level? Well, let's evaluate my profit statement right up here now at the at um, 400 for x1. Right. OK, so now we have profits at 2,000. Good. Suppose ripping good cookies is free to vary all its, its usage of all inputs. What's the proximate profit? Proximate. Profit maximizing level of factor one. Again, here it's not going to change. It's still going to be in the long run situation. It's still going to be x one is equal to four hundred. How much factor two are we, are we going to use? This is another. It's the same thing, right? X two is just entering linearly, right? X two is entering linearly, and so again we have the same comparison. We want to look and see. Does the output price exceed the input price or not? Is it the same or is it less? All right. So suppose we have a competitive firm that's producing output given by this perfect complements production technology. Y, that's our output. Output is equal to the minimum of the usage of factor X and 50. So this is a short run problem. Our amount of factor, well, of the second factor is fixed at 50. Use W to denote the price of factor X and assume the price of the output is a dollar. Find the firm's demand for factor X when the price of X is W. All right, so our profit is going to be P times Y minus W times X, right? This is the output price times the amount of output. So this is revenue minus the input price times the amount of the input. So this is costs. Well, we know Y is equal to the minimum of X and 50. With perfect complements, remember, we just replace this comma with an equal sign. And we have like Y is equal to X and Y is equal to 50. Well, if Y is equal to 50 and Y is equal to X, X has to be 50, right? So then I've replaced this line with one, my output price, times 50, that's my amount of output I'm getting, that's my y, minus w, that's my price of factor x times 50, which is my level of factor x. And this has to be positive if we're making you know, positive profits. And so when, in order to have positive profits, we need for 50 minus 50w to be bigger than zero, or we need for, uh, w to be less than one, right? For, for a similar reason as before. And then how much of factor, how much of this factor do we use if the output price is, or if the factor price is bigger than one? Well, zero. If the, if the output price is bigger than one, then my costs are bigger than 50, right? Because it's gonna be, yeah, we'd have to use 50. So, so in order to have profits, in order to have profits not, in, in order not to have losses, will produce using 50 units of x if w is less than or equal to 1, and 0 units of x if w is bigger than 1. All right. Explain why in the long run, a firm that's cost minimizing will choose k and l, where w divided by marginal product of labor equals r divided by marginal product of capital. I mean for this to be, I, I don't, this is supposed to be mp subscript l and mp subscript k. I don't know what happened there. So. Basically, this is just our cost minimization condition, right? Marginal rate of technical substitution. So MPK over, or MPL over MPK is equal to W over R. And then rearranging, we get 
this is MRTS is MPL over MPK. Rearranging gives us this condition. Yep. So what's happening is the firm, if the firm wants to increase the output, what it's going to do is look to see, is this more efficient to increase output by increasing labor capital or both? And what this condition is telling us is the additional cost of using, the, or the cost of an additional unit of output from increasing labor has to increase, has to equal the cost of increasing output from increasing capital. This is our like our last dollar principle. So that's all that's saying. All right. This is more of like a conceptual thing. Suppose we have two plants, one in, in the U.S., one in Mexico. It cannot change the size of the plants or the amount of capital equipment. That's telling us we're in the short run world. So capital is fixed. The wage in Mexico is $5. Wage in the U.S. is $20. Given current employment, the marginal product of the last worker in Mexico is 100. Marginal product of the last worker in the U.S. is 500. Is the firm maximizing output relative to its labor cost? Well, let's just use this right here. But rather than for comparing labor and capital, let's compare labor in the U.S. to labor in Mexico. So we want MPL over W for the US versus MPL over W for Mexico. And if we do this, that's this line right here. This is gonna be 500 divided by 20 versus 100 divided by five. So 25 versus 20, oh, the US should hire more US workers and fewer Mexican workers, other thing equal, given that the ratio of marginal product to, to wage is, uh, is higher in this exercise. All right, so similar problem. Now we're gonna have the wage in Mexico is 10, wage in the US is 25, given current employment, the marginal product of the last worker in Mexico is 50, marginal product of the last worker in the US is 300. What should they do? Well, again, MPLW versus MPLW for the two places. So 50 divided by 10 is five. Then we have 300 divided by 25 is 12. Uh, again, what's the, well, the 300 was the marginal product in the US. And so 300 divided by 25, which is the wage in the US is 12. So we have a higher marginal product per wage in the US. So the US the firm should hire more US workers, fewer Mexican workers, other things, other things equal. All right, so yeah. All right. So the firm's production function in 19 is F of LK is equal to four L to the half, K to the half, while the market wage is W is equal to one and rental rate of capital is also one. All right, well, this is gonna tell us our marginal rate of technical substitution equal to our, wage, our ratio of our input prices is just gonna be MRTS is equal to one, and then you'll be able to solve for your tangency condition pretty quick. Anyway, our marginal product of labor, well, it's gonna be one half times four, reduce this power by one, times K to the minus, or K to the half, that's this, marginal product of labor, marginal product of capital similar, and then solving, we're gonna have a half divided by half, that cancels, four divided by four, that cancels, L to the minus half minus a half is going to be L in the denominator. K to the half minus minus K to the or minus minus the half is K in the numerator. Set that equal to one, so we get K is equal to L. Uh, in order to produce 32 units, well, we're going to have 4L to the half times L to the half. Right? 4L to the half times L to the half because K is equal to L. To get our 32 units, Q is equal to our output here. All right, and then we'll have four L to the half, L to the half is just four L. Oh, 32 divided by four, eight is L. So we have our optimal bundle for eight units of labor, eight units of capital, which will cost us 16 because the factor prices was one and one. Okay, very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video and then pick up the next video talking about Ann's donut business. So very good, hope this is helpful.